Hey everybody, it's Kevin with Online Shopping My Way. I'm going to do a quick review of this Nemo Aurora three-person backpacking tent. Um, I also own a Marmot Limelight 3P tent, which is pretty much the same footprint. They're head-to-head -head competitors, and I wanted to kind of share the subtle differences between the two uh, and why I like both of them. Um, but right now, we'll just look at the uh, Nemo Aurora because that's what I just used when I went camping. Um, at Gamble Rogers Memorial State Park in Florida. If you get an opportunity, go ahead and get down there. It's awesome. Beachfront on one side and river on the other. All right, so you can see here, um, you'll see at the bottom, I put just a tarp down. I'm real big on that. Um, you don't have to, but see this footprint I'm putting down here, I put on top of that uh, tarp. That tarp not only provides a little bit of extra protection from you know little bumps and rocks and things that may be on the ground, um, but it also ensures that condensation um, and body heat is helped to trap uh, as well. So you're not on the cold ground if it gets too cold uh, at night. Now you're also gonna see that after the tent set up, I go ahead and tuck that uh, tarp underneath the footprint and the edges of the tent. You do not want any of that hanging over because it will trap water uh, and that can get under the tent. So again, it's just for protection directly from the ground and to trap body heat. You do not want any of that tarp uh, sticking out. So you'll see me tuck that in after the tent's all set up. And let me throw this out here. If you're a beginner, the reason I chose a 3P or three person tent is because you always wanna get a tent that's rated for at least one more person than you're actually sleeping. So I sleep very well uh, as a single person in this tent, even though it's rated for three people. It's just too cramped if you get three people in a three person tent, even with both vegetables on either side. Now you'll notice as I set up the poles here, these poles are similar, not exactly the same as that on the Marmot Limelight 3P. Um, that one just has basically two poles that you, you know, kind of put together. This one has a, a, a bit of a different shape. Um, and you'll see here what I'm talking about when I get things all set up. But the, the Marmot Limelight um, setup for the poles, it's ingenious. You know, it's two poles that basically cross, but they are bent so that they provide a straight wall all the way around. The result is the same, but the way the poles are actually set up is a little bit different. I really don't have a preference for one way or the other, but I will say as far as how tight the poles fit to the footprint, the uh, Marmot Limelight is a little bit tighter. Now, that doesn't really make a difference because you're always gonna stake your tent down, you can't really tell, uh, but the truth is, both tents provide about the same amount of headspace. I'm very happy with both tents, but just want to point that out, the difference between the poles, the way they're set up. You see how these two little feet on the end, the two legs on the end, they go right into the end here and also to the other side on my right. And then there's this long pole in the middle and then you connect the other two on the other side. Whereas the Marmot, it's just two poles all the way across and then they're bent to provide that kind of straight wall uh, that which gives more headroom. Uh, when you're inside of the tent okay now one more thing i want to point out a difference between the marmot limelight and this uh, nemo aurora you see how i am closing the huge doors on both of them it's awesome for getting in and out but you notice i have to use one zipper to go all the way around to open and close it with the marmot limelight 3p there are two zippers and i can just kind of open half the door to slip in and out if i want um, it's a little bit tedious but it's not a deal breaker i just wanted to point that out there's only one zipper for both of the doors in the front and the back on the nemo uh, and the marmot limelight has two zippers uh, on each door. All right, so on to the rain fly. Both the Marmot as well as the Nemo have super great rain flies. They're both really light, they're airy, uh, and the seams, I've had no issues with the seams or leaking. That's another thing when it comes to these cheap little tents or whatever. Again, if you're a beginner, it's best to just spend a little more money for a great tent that you can keep for 10 plus years, okay? So here I'm just throwing the rain fly over, and as you can tell, well, you probably can't see very well here, but what I'm doing is I'm connecting the little Velcro strap to make sure that the uh, fly does not bounce around or float around um, after it's all set up just keeps things nice and tight and secure all right so next here i'm going to go ahead and put in the rain fly pole that rain fly pole is going to go between the the tent itself and the rain fly just to create a little bit of air space um, that clearance in and of itself is what's going to allow that airflow it's why you're going to sleep so comfortably at night 
why there won't be condensation buildup because that air is going to flow. That is extremely important. And if you think it's important just for hot weather, you're wrong. Uh, it's extremely important to have airflow even if it's cool out. You don't want condensation buildup in there. Um, that's a bad thing. Again, that's the difference between this kind of tent and maybe a little cheap tent that you might get at Walmart. All right, so here I'm staking the tent. So this stake is the very first one that I'm putting into the ground. And you're going to notice, obviously, you know, I'm going to put it over the uh, over the sand and not over, you know, the footprint or anything like that. But I'm you can't see it real well here, but I'm putting it in at a 45 degree angle. It's wildly important that you put your stakes in at an angle. Please don't just put them into the ground straight up and down. Now. I live in Florida, so I can just push them right. We basically live on a huge, you know, sand mound in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So we have sand here, not really like clay or anything hard um, down here in Florida where I live. But basically, once you put that stake in, that is going to create the structural integrity for the tent so it doesn't flop around during the night. There's less noise. You don't have water that's pulling if it rains. Staking the tent is extremely important. You need to do it right. Now you see this second stake I'm pulling in. I went ahead and put the stake in, but I pulled it nice and taut. So every single stake thereafter, now I'm moving over to the third one. I'm going to pull the base of the tent out against the other three, the other two stakes. The idea is to create a nice little spread, and that's what ensures that structural integrity. Now, you'll remember that I mentioned before about having the tarp under the tent. Again, that's going to help to, you know, even out anything like rocks or whatever underneath, but also to ensure that condensation does not come up to the bottom of the tent and also to help insulate your body heat when you're sleeping on the ground. What I'm doing right now is I'm going around now that the tent is all staked in and I'm ensuring that there's no pieces of that tarp sticking out. Wildly important because you don't want rain or even dew overnight getting between that tarp and the bottom of the tent that's going to keep you nice and warm uh, and ensure that you don't have any issues throughout the night. Okay, so lastly on to our vestibules. This is essentially, I'm going to show you the one here in the front. There's one in the back as well, but this is where we can store our gear. So now that things are all set up, the tent staked in, I can go ahead and zip both of those openings together as you can see here. And I'm going to go ahead and stake it in and again at a 45 degree angle and nice and taut, right? There you go. Um, and stake that into the ground. That way you've got plenty of room to store your things underneath and it also will help provide some clearance for you getting in and out of the tent. There you go. All right, so we can go ahead and unzip one side of the vestibule and go ahead and roll her up like this. This will give us direct access to our door. Now here's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and stake this uh, door flap off, but look at where I have to reach to open this door it's awesome that it's so big it's just so easy to get in and out but when i reach down and i go ahead and unzip uh the tent so i can put the things in i have to reach all the way in now it's, it's a small complaint i get it it's not that big of a deal but after also having that moment it's nice to have two different zippers that i can just easily you know have the zipper halfway there where i get in and out i have to zip all the way back and around Okay, so this is the last step for structural integrity. This one specifically for the rain fly, but it serves two purposes. These tie downs, you'll see this just comes in one long string. You pretty much have to uh, cut it like I'm doing right here for the first time. Uh, and then, you know, you've got it straight. So I just folded it in half and cut it, one for each side. So the idea here is that there are gonna be tie downs to ensure that the fly stays away from the structure of the tent so that water sheds away and does not touch the tent, um, therefore you know, creating condensation or even dripping water on you um, if there's a leak somewhere, which there generally isn't. But anyway, I just created a little slip knot here, as you could tell, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the stake on one end, do the same on the other end, and tie that to the fly stake down um, loop. And of course, we'll do the exact same thing on the other side, uh, and that'll keep the water shedding off and onto the ground and keep us nice and dry with no condensation. All right, and here's our finished product. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go ahead and leave links to both the Nemo Aurora 3 as well as the Marmot Limelight 3P in the description. You can't go wrong with either tent. Wanted to give you guys a general idea of the value here. Both tents are going to be similar. So feel free to subscribe, and thanks for watching.